Okay, this is the review from chapter chapters three through seven. This question one is a piecewise function. It comes from chapter three, <clears throat> uh, section three point one, I believe. So we need to set up this rational expression. Easiest thing to start with would be the denominator. We're dividing by h, and we can subtract the function f of x. We can subtract x squared plus 4x minus 18. This is the expression that uh, you need to be most careful with, f of x plus h. x plus h is an input that goes in place of that x right there and that x right there. So instead of x squared, it's going to be x plus h squared. And then instead of plus 4x, it's plus 4x plus h and then minus 18. Now simplifying this numerator to get rid of parentheses, x plus h squared becomes x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And we have plus 4x plus 4h minus 18. And we can distribute this minus sign minus x squared minus 4x plus 18 all over h. <clears throat> now a lot of these terms in the numerator are going to cancel. x squared and minus x squared. Positive 18, negative 18, negative 4x, and positive 4x. So we have left in the numerator the terms 2xh plus h squared plus 4h <clears throat> all over h. Now every term in the numerator has an h So if you factor out an h, you're left with 2x plus h plus 4 all over h. The term in the denominator, h, can cancel with the factor that you just factored out. So the final answer is 2x plus 4 plus h. Question 2, graphing a piecewise function. Also from chapter 3, the way that uh, I described this in class, and the way I've always shown this is to consider each piece of the piecewise function separately and to make an input output chart or an xy chart for each piece. Now, <clears throat> for this top piece, the values of x depend on this domain right here. For this top piece, x has to be less than 0, and it cannot equal 0. So I'm going to let x equals 0, but you got to remember that's going to be an open circle at that point. So if x is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. So the point 0, 1 has to have an open circle. Now we need to choose another point for this xy chart. In this domain, x has to be less than 0, so negative 1. Uh, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 1, 0. Now this one can be a solid circle because it's this x value of negative 1 is in that domain. So that's going to be a piece that looks like that. Now the middle piece here, this domain has an endpoint on the left. It cannot be greater than, or it can't be uh, less than or equal to zero. And here it has to be less than or less than three. So since it's bounded on both sides, I'm going to use those two values for x zero and three as the choices for my x value. Now the nice thing about this is there's only one choice for an output. Y has to be 1 every single time regardless of the input. So when x is 0, y is 1, and when x is 3, y is still 1. Now this point right here, 3 comma 1, has to be an open circle because at that end point x has to be strictly less than 3, not less than or equal to. Uh, but at the point 0 comma 1 we can put a, a filled in or a closed circle. Now there's an open circle there already and we're going to put a closed circle on top of it so the whole point just becomes closed. So there's the point 0, 1, here's the open circle 3, 1. Now this bottom piece here, we need to choose x values in this domain. x is greater than or equal to 3, so I'm going to let x equal 3. 1 third of 3 is 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and since x can be greater than or equal to 3, this can be a closed circle. The point 3, 1 is right there. Now we need to choose another point for x. It can be anything greater than 3, but keep in mind we have to take one-third of the value we choose. 
So it would be wise to let x equal 6. 1 third of 6 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So the point 6 comma 0 is another point on the graph. So there's our piecewise graph. The most important thing to remember is that this is a function. So whatever picture you end up with, you need to remember and keep in mind it's a function, so your graph has to pass the vertical line test. If we pass the vertical line through any point on this graph, even right here, it appears that the graph passes through two points, because since this is an open circle, it doesn't count. So everywhere in this graph, it passes the vertical line test, meaning that this is a graph of a function. Now part B, evaluating the same function f at negative 3. Again, keep in mind this is a function. One input of negative 3 can only produce one output. Some of the mistakes I've been seeing on a problem like this is to take this input and to plug it into all three pieces, giving you three different outputs. Well, that doesn't follow the definition of a function. So you've got to figure out which piece this input falls into, negative 3. So if you check your domain, it falls into this top one, where x is less than 0. So if you plug in a negative 3 for this x, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Part C, f of 0. Again, you've got to figure out where that falls. It falls into this middle piece because x can be greater than or equal to 0. So in the middle piece, if you plug in a 0, there isn't anywhere to plug it in. Your only option for an output is 1. Okay, question 3. Find the value f of 1. Normally when you're evaluating a function, you have the equation of the function that you can plug x values into. We're just given the graph. But a graph is just a collection of points with an input and an output relationship. So we got to find the point corresponding to x equals 1 on the graph. The y value would be the answer. So here's the point right here that has an x value of 1. The y value right there is 0. So f of 1 is equal to 0. Now, this, this graph didn't copy too well. This, the graph stops here, and it stops there as well. It doesn't go beyond these two points. And that's important when stating the domain and range. So the domain are values along the x-axis that produce outputs, like where my pencil, where my point is now negative 3. Negative 3 is producing no outputs on the graph, so negative 3 is not in the domain. The first point on the x-axis that's producing an output is this point right here, negative 2. All of these points, starting to the right of negative 2 all the way up to positive 2, are producing outputs. So the domain, including the endpoints of negative 2 and 2, the domain is negative 2 to positive 2. Range is found in a similar fashion using the y-axis. Okay. If you consider every single point on this graph, the highest points on this graph, these two points, the y values of those points go no higher than positive 2. If you consider the lowest points on this graph, these two points down here, the lowest vertical distance they have is negative 2. And so the range is negative 2 to 2. Now the intervals for which the function is increasing and decreasing, start with, starting with increasing. And the thing you, know, you got to remember about this, and the, one of the common mistakes I see is um, students will state, well, it's increasing from this point to this point. And you don't use points when you're talking about interval notation or intervals of uh, increase or decrease, and you're talking about a range of x values. So for example here, reading the graph from left to right, the graph is increasing from left to right, but you don't want to state from this point to this point. You state the x values of those points. The x value here is negative 2. The x value here is negative 1 and a half. So the graph is increasing on the open interval negative 2 to negative 1.5. Then the graph starts to decrease. <clears throat> Once it gets to this lowest value here, this local minimum, the graph begins to increase again. And it's increasing all the way up to this local maximum. So this is from negative 0.5 on the x-axis to positive 0.5 on the x-axis negative 0.5 to 0.5. And then it begins to decrease again, but then there's this last interval here. It's increasing, and it's from 1.5 to 2 on the x-axis. Decreasing, this interval right here, this piece of the graph is a piece of the graph that's decreasing. It's from negative 1.5 to negative 0.5 on the x-axis.
and there's another interval right here that's decreasing. It's the point. It corresponds to x values of 0.5 to 1.5. <coughs> That's also from uh, chapter 3. It's the section titled Getting Information from the Graph of a Function. I believe it's section 3.3. Now question 4. <clears throat> These are called compositions of functions. Also from chapter 3 is towards the end. Uh, I believe 3.6 or maybe 3.7. It's called composition of functions. It's in the section with function operations. Um, and this little open circle is different than multiply. We're not going to take the two functions and multiply them together. A similar notation rather than the open circle is f of g of x. So it's clear in the second notation I've written that the g function is an input that goes inside the f function. So if we take a look at the function f, f equals the square root of x. x is the input. So this x is going to be replaced with a new function. So instead of the square root of x, it's the square root of another function and because I'm inputting another function I'm going to do it in parentheses even though it may not be necessary the other function is 2 over x minus 1 now it's not uh, it's not okay to leave it in this form unfortunately when you take the square root of a fraction it's the same as taking the square root of the numerator and the denominator and seeing it like this it's clear that uh, we have to simplify we can't leave a square root in the bottom of a fraction so multiply the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator by the square root of x minus 1. So that what you're left with in the numerator is x minus 1. Now, depending on how familiar you are with with multiplying radicals, it was uh, something that's supposed to be taught in 10, 10, but when you're multiplying two square roots together, you multiply the terms on the inside. So this turns into the square root of 2x minus 2. Now, we've got to state the domain. There's two things we have to consider. First of all, this is a rational expression, meaning the denominator cannot equal 0. So we're going to run into a problem if x equals 1. So that's the first thing we need to notice. x cannot equal 1. But uh, we also, as part of the rational expression, we have a square root. Now, you can only take the square root of expressions that are greater than or equal to 0. So we, all, we also have to say that 2x minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. If you solve this, uh, add 2 to the other side and then divide by 2, you're going to get x has to be greater than or equal to 1. But we already decided x cannot equal 1, so we have to amend this and say x is strictly greater than 1. x does not equal 1, so this is the domain. And it's appropriate to state the domain in interval notation, so the domain is 1 to infinity. If it equals 1, we're going to run into a problem with the denominator. If it's less than 1, we're going to run into a problem here in the numerator. We can't take the square root of negative values. Now, part B, we're forming the composition in the reverse order. We're doing g of f of x. So the g function here, 2 over, instead of x, that's going to be an open input. And now we can plug anything we want into there. But in this case, we want to plug in f of x, which is the square root of x. So this turns into 2 divided by square root of x minus 1. Now again, it's not, uh, it's not appropriate to leave a square root in the bottom of a fraction. Simplifying this is slightly different than simplifying uh, part A. Because uh, in part A, the whole entire denominator is underneath the square root. Here we have a term where part of it is underneath the square root, part of it is not. So in this case, you simplify by multiplying by what's called the conjugate, the square root of x plus 1. So we'd have to imagine doing is both of these would be in parentheses. And you would uh, multiply using the FOIL method or just the distributive property. The square root of x times the square root of x is x. The square root of x times 1 is positive square root of x. But then we're going to have a negative square root of x right here that would cancel that positive x out. So then negative 1 times positive 1 is minus 1. Multiplying here, distributing the 2, you get 2 square roots of x plus 2. So it's a similar situation. We have to uh, consider a, a couple of things here when determining the domain. In the numerator, or sorry, in the denominator, we see that x cannot equal 1. Now in the numerator, we have this radical 
term here, square root of x, which means that x has to be greater than or equal to 0 in order to square root that. Now, we've got to be careful. In this interval, x is greater than or equal to 0. That in, that's going to include the point 1, but x cannot equal 1. So when writing this in interval notation, the domain is from 0 up to the up to the x value of 1 with a parenthesis because x can't equal 1 union and then we start at 1 again and go to infinity so essentially this right here is saying x can be anything greater than 0 including 0 but not including this this x value of 1